The improved version of Audi's fourth generation A8 isn't an obvious choice given new arrivals in the segment for boardroom level large luxury saloons, but there's still much that the right kind of customer might really like about Ingolstadt's elegant flagship sedan. It's now smarter and sophisticated enough to please the most demanding boardroom buyer. Audi is used to winning. It's got extremely good at it, continuing to push technological boundaries wherever it can to stay a step ahead of its rivals. And the best place to see Vorsprung Duk Technik at work? Well, has to be here, doesn't it? With the brand's top A8 large luxury saloon, further improved in this evolved take on the fourth generation model. It's hard to remember now, but prior to this A8's original launch back in 1994, Audi wasn't really considered a fully-fledged prestige brand. Its cars generally languished in the corner of your local Volkswagen dealer's showroom, and they appealed to those who couldn't quite stretch to the products of the smarter German makers. The first generation A8, which replaced the previous Audi V8 saloon, changed all that, and it was a car the like of which the luxury segment had never seen. Aluminium space frame technology from NASA, four-wheel drive Quattro technology from the World Rally Championship, and exquisite standards of build quality, which really redefined what boardroom buyers could expect from a European luxury car. At a stroke, it put posh rivals on the back foot and Audi has never looked back since. The second and third generation A8 saloons merely perfected the recipe, but this Mark IV D5 series model, first launched in 2017, took a real step forward again. Has Audi further perfected it in this facelifted form? It needs to. After all, much has happened in the segment for large boardroom level luxury saloons since this fourth generation A8 first hit the showrooms. First and foremost, its two arch rivals, the Mercedes S-Class and the BMW 7 Series, have completely reinvented themselves with entirely new designs. And secondly, the sector's diversified with the parallel availability of all electric models from those two brands, the Mercedes EQS and the BMW i7. Audi does continue to offer a plug-in hybrid version of the A8, but the full EV trend is one the company won't be able to match until the Mark V A8 arrives. Ingolstadt is putting a lot into that model, this car's replacement, so they clearly didn't spend too long on the fourth generation update package we're going to evaluate here, which hit the market early in 2022. Some minor visual tweaks, some fancier lighting systems, and a bit of a technological update is what it amounts to, with all the changes naturally also carried through to the S8 Super Saloon Sporting version, which is actually what we're going to test here. You might wonder whether the modest package of updates will be enough to keep this A8 model line competitive, but there's surely a place for it amongst top executives who, like us, question the quality of the Mark 7 S-Class and find the look of the Mark 7 7 Series somewhat divisive. These people are going to need the film that's coming up here, the industry's most complete review of this improved fourth generation A8, the car and driving road test. The current cultural zeitgeist wants to convince us that boardroom level luxury saloons should be fully electric. The next generation version of this Audi A8 will be, and versions of its two main rivals from Mercedes and BMW already are. So this improved version of Ingolstadt's fourth generation flagship sedan is somewhat behind the current technological curve. Doesn't really feel like it though. Once you take a seat at the wheel, surrounded by twinkling screens, uh, the conventional aircraft style gear shift stick falling perfectly to hand as you look ahead and grasp the huge four spoke wheel. This very shortly is gonna be what luxury limos used to be like. It all felt very current when we first tried this D5 series design just after its original launch in 2017, and it felt even more so shortly after that when Audi improved it with 48 volt mild hybrid electrification and the option of a plug-in hybrid powertrain for those who wanted it. That engine lineup continues unchanged here, topped off as before by a 571 PS twin turbo petrol V8 fitted to the top S8 Super Saloon model that we're trying here. 
We will get to the S8, but to begin with, we ought to focus on the mainstream 3-litre V6 A8 units because they're what almost everyone chooses with this car. Easily the most popular, despite the diesel doomsayers, is the 50 TDI Quattro diesel variant, which, like its arch rival, the Mercedes uh, S350D, offers 286 PS and drives, like all A8s and S8s, through the brand's usual silky smooth torque converter Tiptronic 8-speed auto gearbox. The alternative is the petrol 55 TFSI, which offers quite a lot more power, 340 PS, but manages a 0 to 60 sprint time of 5.6 seconds, which is just 0.3 of a second faster on the way to a limited 155 miles an hour top speed that all versions of this Audi share. The previously mentioned 48 volt mild hybrid technology here is pretty much the same as that which features with rival Mercedes and BMW setups. So there's an integrated BAS belt alternator starter generator, uh, which powers a 48 volt main electrical setup in which a compact lithium ion battery in the boot stores energy harvested via a KERS, kinetic energy recovery system. Uh, that additional electricity might be used either to boost the engine when you're accelerating or alternatively to restart it when the stop start system kicks in at low speeds or that surplus energy might be directed to help power the ancillary functions. Audi's overall objective here uh, wasn't to provide uh, Prius-like periods of electric only driving but instead to make the engines more efficient via smoother transitions between driving, cruising and resting. Uh, the technology is so seamlessly built into these powertrains that you really simply don't notice it. There are certainly no fancy graphics, nor do you have to press any buttons or plug anything in. We can see why the vast majority of A8 customers go for the V6 diesel. So appealing is the balance between performance, refinement and efficiency. Uh, with 600 Nm of torque on tap, that's 100 Nm more than with the 3 litre petrol V6 of the 55 TFSI petrol version. Pulling power is in prodigious supply and the TDI does offer an emotive growl under urgent acceleration. With both engines, you get the usual Audi drive select driving modes efficiency, dynamic and comfort, which of course alter throttle response, steering feel and the auto transmissions gear shift times two. Uh, there is an individual menu if you want to choose all your own drive parameters and there's an auto drive select setting too if you just want the system to make all the decisions for you. A more responsible way of choosing that 3 litre petrol V6 is to get it mated up to Audi's latest TFSIE plug-in technology, which sees the engine paired up to an electric motor, which is in turn powered by a much bigger version of the uh, lithium-ion battery, which features with Audi's mild hybrid technology. Only one plug-in variant is offered here, the 6D TFSIE model, offering a combined system output of 462 PS. That's enough to get you from rest to 62 in just 5.9 seconds. Uh, top speed, that's limited to 155 miles an hour, although if it wasn't, this variant could probably crest 170. At the wheel of an A860 TFSIE, you can choose between four driving modes. EV stands for fully electric driving. Hybrid offers an efficient combination of both drive system types. And hold is for conserving the available electrical energy, uh, while the combustion engine charges the battery in charge mode. Of greater interest to potential A8 PHEV customers, though, will be the predicted all-electric driving range, which, thanks to the bigger 17.9, kilowatt hour battery is now well over 30 miles but that is still way off the impressive 63 mile total that you get from a rival but pricier Mercedes plug-in S-Class. The Audi offers an 84 miles an hour all-electric top speed but obviously if you regularly approach that your battery charge isn't going to last very long. The final A8 model line engine option can be found in the sporting S8 model that we mentioned earlier. Uh, that is the car, in fact, that we're trying here. Uh, it gets a 4-litre twin turbocharged V8 with 571 PS, a unit that's also rather ineffectually embellished with the 48-volt mild hybrid tech we mentioned earlier on. There's a 571 PS on tap, which is interesting to note. It's 34 PS less than the output generated by the final S8 Plus version of this car's D4 series pre-2017 era predecessor. 
Pulling power though has increased in this generation model to a thumping 800 newton meters, so it's very definitely quicker in the real world. 62 miles an hour from rest takes just 3.8 seconds. In an S8, torque is transmitted to the tarmac via an upgraded eight-speed Tiptronic auto gearbox and quattro four-wheel drive, supplemented by a rear sport differential, which constantly varies the amount of drive that's sent to each individual rear wheel. Uh, the quattro system's variable two, depending on the conditions, up to 70% of torque can be directed to the front wheels, or alternatively, up to 85% of power can be directed rearwards. Uh, dynamic or wheel steering is standard here and it turns the rear wheels in the opposite direction to the fronts at parking speeds and at the same direction at higher speeds for extra cornering stability. Perhaps the key change made with this D5 Series S8 model though was the addition of its predictive active suspension system which uses a camera to scan the road ahead as you drive along with electromechanical actuators uh, which constantly vary the ride height to suit the tarmac ahead. They separately load or relieve each wheel based on road conditions to an extent uh, which depends on the drive select driving mode that you've chosen. Choose the comfort setting, for example, here badged Comfort Plus, and the suspension tilts the body into the turns to reduce lateral load. Uh, choose Dynamic, though, and body roll is cut to around half of what you get with the standard suspension in this car. Now that might suggest that the standard air suspended setup you get on lesser A8s uh, is somewhat squishy, but actually it's pretty well judged, especially with the dynamic drive select mode activated. The 24% torsional stiffness improvement that's been built into this fourth generation model obviously helps here, enabled by its taut MLB Evo platform and a sophisticated body structure featuring a magnesium strut brace at the front and a carbon fiber panel which sits across the rear bulkhead. We might even be tempted to call mainstream versions of this A8 quite rewarding to drive were it not for a typical Audi luxury saloon bugbear, a lack of steering feedback. At least the helm's precise though, uh, it's aided by a progressive setup which allows it to operate more and more directly as the turning angle increases. Standard wheel selective torque control further helps through the bends. Uh, this minimally breaks the two wheels on the inside of the corner uh, before they can begin to spin. And it's worth pointing out that if you're considering the most popular A850 TDI diesel model, that that variant's most obvious rival, the pricier Mercedes S350D, lacks the four-wheel drive system that makes this Audi so stable in slippery conditions. Whatever your variant of choice though, in driving an A8, you always tend to feel that you're only really scratching the surface of what this car has been designed to do. The drive dynamics, as we've said, uh, in particular are quite surprising, although throughout uh, the sheer weight and width of this car will never be far from your mind. Uh, the exemplary refinement is easier to appreciate, well, at least it is at speed. Uh, Audi says that this A8 is the quietest combustion engine car it's ever built, while well, it doesn't really feel that way when you're standing next to an idling TDI variant. On the highway though, uh, even with the diesel, the cabin easily reaches the whisper the quiet standards which are required in this class. And that is just one of the many things that still allow you to pitch this car credibly against its toughest rivals. It's an A8 that uh, remains able to sit comfortably at the top table in this segment. Twenty years ago, this is a piece of styling we'd have been gasping over, a progressive and sophisticated vision of how the moneyed elite would travel in the 21st century's third decade. Today, we're a little more used to futuristic styling statements of this sort, but the fourth generation A8 still looks technically advanced, handsome and imposing, if not classically elegant. Stylist Mark Lichter intended for it to usher in a whole new era of design for the brand, but it isn't one that'll be long remembered. We can't help thinking though that the older customers who actually choose cars of this kind will prefer it to the divisive avant-garde looks of newer segment designs like the seventh generation BMW 7 Series or the Mercedes EQS. 
particularly perhaps in this improved form, which gets a package of exterior changes, nearly all focused here at the front. The base of the signature single frame grille is now wider, and in place of the previous horizontal strips, it now features these little tick-shaped chromed features across its grid. Uh, the side intakes are now upright and more overt, and the LED headlights now have restyled integrated illuminated strips, and they can be specified with the brand's latest digital light technology that we've been trying here. With this in place, each lamp will contain 1.3 million micro mirrors, which disperse the light into tiny pixels and allows it to be adjusted with great precision. Size matters in this segment, so at this fourth generation model's original launch in 2017, Audi made it longer than its predecessor. Even this standard version is 5.19 meters in length, and the alternative long wheelbase version is 130 mils longer still. Either way, two mid-level style lines feature. One starts from the headlamp corner and flows back through the door handles, while just above, there's a second contour, which begins from the bonnet edge and extends right back to the boot. The tinsel matters, of course, a chrome exterior package for mainstream models, more dynamic bumpers with mid-level S-line trim and darker touches for black edition spec. This S8 gets its own body kit, silver mirrors and 20 or 21 inch alloys. Lower down the range, the rims are between 18 and 21 inches in size. Audi's done its best to give the rear end a bit of a sense of zeitgeist too. An LED light band incorporating an embedded chrome strip extends across the entire width. It looks distinctive and now a standard includes the company's organic light emitting diode technology using four ultra thin filaments which bear the Audi brand rings and put on a dramatic light show whenever you arrive at or leave the car. We're not sure that even more chrome back here is really necessary, but you get it anyway with this strip across the lower part of the bumper, which integrates the trapezoidal trims of the exhaust system. As ever with the A8 though, it's what's underneath all this tinsel that really ought to command your attention, namely the high-tech aluminium Audi space frame, which debuted a quarter of a century ago and incorporates not only aluminium and steel, but also magnesium and carbon fiber reinforced polymer, all of it bonded together using no fewer than 14 jointing techniques. That frame is attached to the stiff, sophisticated MLB Evo platform that the Volkswagen Group currently uses for all its largest cars, including Audi's own Q5 and Q7, as well as the Bentley Bentayga and the Porsche Cayenne. It also explains the 24% improvement in torsional rigidity built into this fourth generation A8 from launch. And it's the reason why this Audi tips the scales at much the same curb weight as a rival base rear-driven Mercedes S-Class, despite having to carry around the extra weight of a four-wheel drive system. We'll take a seat at the wheel, pausing on the way to notice that the door handles are all operated by micro switches that require just five millimeters of movement when you go to use them. This car is full of little touches like that. Most of them are on show inside, where the Vorsprung Dirk Technik charisma of this car really gets into gear. Uh, the interior of a rival Mercedes S-Class or BMW 7 Series does feel higher tech than this, but is it really more luxurious and opulent? Well, we can understand why you might think not. Anyway, this Audi ought to offer something different for this uh, segment, in line with Engelstadt's cool, confident vibe provided that that also incorporates the required splash of elegance needed for a car of this status. Uh, this is delivered by exquisite trimming using aluminium and Alcantara, along with high quality inlays. Uh, they have a carbon finish here, although it's a little overshadowed by the overriding emphasis on high gloss black surfacing. Audi's not made any obvious changes as part of this update, but none were really needed. Uh, you are going to have to light screens because uh, this cabin incorporates no fewer than three of them. Uh, the two that you'll notice first, they power up as soon as the door's opened and they dominate the upper and lower parts of the piano black trimmed center stack here. In the past, we've had some reservations about this kind of layout uh, as used by Jaguar and Land Rover models, but here it uh, does work rather better. Firstly, because the lower display deals only with climate control 
and with comfort functions so you don't need to keep taking your eyes off the road uh, in order to look down at that. And second, because the whole setup works with haptic feedback, which sees the touchscreen surface emit a tactile and acoustic signal when a function is pressed. Uh, as a result, once you get used to uh, where everything is here, you shouldn't have to look away from the windscreen in order to operate any given function. The Comfort Spec front seats will be trimmed with either Valcona or fine Nappa leather and offer still unsurpassed levels of luxury in this class. Uh, they're crafted from a variety of carefully shaped flexible foam layers. Uh, we're not quite so enamored with the design of the spoke wheel here, which uh, they position you perfectly in front of, but there is very little default about the instrument binnacle that you view through this, which as ever with the brand uh, features a configurable Audi virtual cockpit screen. This 12.3 inch TFT digital monitor works as usual with two main selectable layouts, a classical view, which prioritizes a couple of prominent dials and an infotainment mode, which shrinks the pair of gauges to allow more central space for various data readouts or a full width navigation map. With this particular S8 variant, you also get a third selectable layout where the focus is the rev counter displayed as a square graph. Whatever your A8 model though, uh, there's no real need to look at the instruments thanks to the standard provision of a head-up display which uh, projects virtually everything that you really need to know uh, onto the lower part of the windshield right up into your line of vision. All of this works, of course, in concert with the two center stack screens I mentioned at the beginning, the gently curved upper 10.1 inch display blending almost invisibly into this uh, surrounding high gloss black trim and operable via touch, voice or steering wheel controls. Now, the systems which uh, run this monitor here have been improved as part of this update. Uh, media connectivity is now served by faster MIB3 software. As before, this main central screen deals with the most important radio, media and telephone functions. But with this revised model, there's a far more sophisticated, intelligent 3D navigation system now augmented with online and car to x services. As you'd expect, there's the usual Audi smartphone interface, and that's compatible with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems. And of course, you'll also get a full suite of Audi Connect media connectivity features, which amongst other uh, other things deliver online media streaming, uh, Google points of interest, search function, a comprehensive Audi online traffic information system, plus uh, news and weather feeds via a Wi-Fi hotspot supporting the super fast LTE advanced mobile data network. This revised model also gets a far more intuitive voice control system accessed by the command Hey Audi. As we've said, the lower monitor, which is 8.6 inches in size, is reserved for more comfort oriented features, although its screen can also be used to trace letters, which the MMI search system can then use to give you selection options. Of course, you might expect that to be just another thing that would uh, leave these shiny displays continually coated in grubby fingerprints, and you might also worry about, uh, say, sunlight reflection. Audi's tried with partial success to mitigate both of these issues by use of an anti-fingerprint coating and a layer of anti-glare film, but to some extent, both those problems do still remain. On to storage space. Uh, the main receptacle for this is a shallow twin-lidded area between the seats here, which also incorporates the Audi Fongbox system's wireless charging mat, plus a couple of USB-C points. Uh, there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses, but a lidded cubby uh, just next to the gear stick here gives you twin cup holders and a 12 volt socket. And that's about it, unless you count the averagely sized door bins, uh, the severely compromised glove box, or the tiny compartments which sit behind the door handles. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now the long wheelbase version features positively enormous rear doors, as you expect it might, given that variant's 5.32 meter length. Even this standard body style though, allows you to enter in grandly opulent fashion. Yes, even if you happen to be wearing palace garden party headgear.
Now what you'll find inside here depends on which of the rear seat packages you've chosen to specify. Standard models get a conventional three-person rear bench and the usual seat back pockets, uh, center vents and B pillar and grab handle coat hooks. Inlays on the front seat backs and the Alcantara door trimming, uh, they add the required element of exclusive luxury. Now if you've gone for the long wheelbase body style, uh, then the standard setup will give you a rear seat remote arrangement which is based around a fold down armrest which incorporates controls for operating the various climate control, seat and convenience functions. Plus, uh, the package also incorporates a 5.7 inch OLED display. This used to be removable, but uh, it no longer is, presumably because tired executives kept losing it down the side of the seat. Long wheelbase models get a four zone automatic air conditioning system, a rear seat Audi music interface package with two USB-C ports, heated back seats with luxurious comfort headrests and electric sun blinds for the rear window and the rear door windows. Plus, there's also the provided pull-out centre cubby with its 12-volt socket, and that also incorporates a useful 230-volt socket for things like laptops. If you have a long wheelbase A8, the third option is the extra cost rear comfort pack we have fitted here, which offers two individual electrically adjustable seats separated by a proper center console, incorporating the aforementioned little OLED display, plus a pair of 10.1 inch HD screens mounted onto the front seat backs. If you're a chauffeur, uh, then this rear comfort pack arrangement is a setup that you really want for this car. With that, the seats incorporate four-way powered lumbar support and foot rests. There's roof-mounted ambient strip lighting. You get matrix LED reading lights and the proper console makes it easier to use the screen. It has menu options for seats, lights, blinds, uh, media, radio and temperature settings. The seat back twin monitor arrangement, well it's nothing like as sophisticated as the enormous roof mounted 31.3 inch BMW theatre screen. You could have an arrival BMW 7 series, but everything you'd really need as a busy journeying top executive is here. The twin monitors can display content from passengers devices and can receive numerous audio and video streams from streaming networks, uh, TV media libraries or cellular networks. Time to check out the boot which rises electrically and can do so with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper if your chauffeur's taking the day off and you find yourself approaching the car laden down with bags. Uh, we were disappointed to find when we first tested this fourth generation model that uh, despite the increase in body length, boot space has shrunk from uh, the 520 litre total that you got with the previous model to 505 litres here. That's quite a bit less than you'll get in the Mercedes S-Class. That's 540 litres in the diesel and 550 in the petrol. And even mainstream versions of the seventh generation BMW 7 Series, which are plug-in hybrids, uh, they can offer 525 litres. The plug-in hybrid version of this A8 demands a bit of luggage space compromise there. Uh, capacity falls to just 390 litres, courtesy of the size of the battery residing beneath the floor. Audi will have to improve things considerably in this respect with the next generation version of this car. At least the trunk area you do get is practically shaped. It's enough in a conventionally engine model to take up to eight carry-on suitcases. And of course, a couple of golf bags will be easily accommodated. Uh, if you're not careful, you will easily scratch this shiny chromed sill when you're lumping them in though. Uh, the underfloor space is almost entirely taken up by the spare wheel, but you get a floor net that can be uh, strung between the chromed tie-down hooks. And there's a small netted area on the left. If you're likely to be often carrying longer items like skis, then there's the annoying need to pay extra for the optional ski hatch. Now we couldn't have that added here uh, because there are two individual rear seats. If you need more room for bigger items, then you have an A8 with a rear bench rather than two individual rear chairs. There's useful fold down backrest that you'd have to do without in the rival Mercedes S-Class or BMW 7 Series. Unfortunately, for reasons that Audi can't explain to us, this feature can't be had in its usual split folding form. So you'll have to totally evacuate the rear passenger compartment whenever you use it.
Refreshingly, A8 prices haven't risen a great deal since this fourth generation model was originally launched. Uh, pricing across the A8 range sits in the £73,000 to £100,000 bracket and there are two body shapes, this standard wheelbase version or for £4,000 more, a long wheelbase body shape. Uh, you can have either of the three mainstream engines with either body style. The starting point being the entry level 50 TDI Quattro diesel. 1,700 pounds more gets you the conventional 55 TFSI petrol, but it's more than 12,500 pounds more over the cost of the diesel if you want the 60 TFSI E petrol plug-in hybrid. The two conventional engines are embellished with 48 volt mild hybrid tech and as usual with the A8, everything's built around a lightweight Audi space frame with quattro four wheel drive and Audi drive select driving modes, which influence not only throttle response, but also the standard adaptive air suspension and the shift times of the eight speed automatic transmission. What about trim levels? Well, regardless of your power plant or your body shape preference, Sport is the entry level trim option with mid-range S-Line available in each case for £5,000 more. With a standard wheelbase, the top spec trim level is Black Edition. That's just over £7,300 more above base spec. And the long wheelbase model, while well, the top spec trim there is Vorsprung, and that is around £23,500 above base spec. This standalone V8 petrol S8 model, priced from just under £100,000 from launch, comes only in short wheelbase form and it has its own trim hierarchy. If you can afford to progress beyond the standard version, there's a black edition variant for £3,000 more and a top Vorsprung spec model for £15,000 more. Got all that? Good. We'd expect those figures to undercut prices for the 7th generation BMW 7 Series. Those hadn't been announced at the time of making this film though. And it's worth pointing out that if all you want is a conventional engine in a car of this kind, uh, then that BMW is going to look considerably more expensive because uh, for our market, uh, from the beginning of production at least, the Mark 7 7 Series was only available in pricier plug-in hybrid form. We can be much more specific in how this A8's pricing compares to this Audi's other arch rival, the seventh generation Mercedes S-Class. Uh, you're looking at a 12 to 13,000 pound premium to own an equivalent version of the Mercedes over this Audi, but a massive 26,000 pounds more if your comparison point is between the plug-in hybrid versions. The only other conceivable straightforward options in this segment lie with two models that are very rare indeed, the Lexus LS and the Maserati Quattroporte, both of which only come with a standard wheelbase. Uh, they sell only in really tiny numbers and they aren't quite the same thing anyway. Uh, the Lexus is a full hybrid which can't be plugged in. It doesn't always come with all wheel drive and it costs from around 85,000 pounds. The Maserati comes only with thirsty petrol V6s and V8s and that costs from around £90,000. For this kind of spend, you might also want to look at a five-door contender in the segment, say a Porsche Panamera, or if you've plenty to spend, a Mercedes-AMG GT63 4Matic Plus four-door coupe, although Audi says that cars like those are more accurately targeted by pricier versions of its A7 Sportback hatch, the RS7 for example. Theoretically, Tesla's Model S could also be a potential rival if you were prepared to consider a full EV, although that car really competes most directly against the Mercedes EQS and the BMW i7. All three of those need over £100,000 for ownership. Finally, this S8's £100,000 asking price looks good value against the identically powerful BMW M760 e xDrive, but that Munich model is a plug-in hybrid, as are the Mercedes-AMG S63e and S73e models. An arguably closer match is the more conventional 530 PS V8 power plant of the Maserati Quattroporte Trofeo, but that costs around £130,000. You might also consider BMW's competition Grand Coupe and the Porsche Panamera Turbo, but those are also much pricier. 
Enough with alternatives. Uh, we could understand if the A8's combination of elegance and value prompted you to want to stay with Audi's interpretation as to what a luxury saloon of this class should be. And if so, you're going to need to know about standard specifications. So let's take a look at that right now. As we suggested earlier on, nearly all customers choose an A8 in either Sport or S-Line form. And with this facelifted model, the key spec addition for each has been the standardization of Audi's distinctive OLED rear light strip with its unique nighttime signature. Uh, beyond that, expected A8 exterior features fitted across the range include LED headlights, metallic paint, a powered boot lid, uh, power folding mirrors, uh, powered door closure, convenience key keyless entry, an anti-theft alarm and a windscreen with heat insulating glass. Inside every mainstream A8, you can expect Falcona leather upholstery, powered heated comfort contour front seats, uh, two-zone automatic air conditioning, the 12.3-inch Audi virtual cockpit instrument screen, a head-up display, a rear-view camera, uh, adaptive cruise control, and an LED interior lighting pack. Media features include the MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch package, and that gives you two center stack screens, a 10.1 inch upper monitor, and an 8.6 inch lower control panel. That package gives you a 10 speaker DAB sound system, Hey Audi voice recognition, uh, 3D navigation, a DVD player, and the Audi wireless smartphone interface, which connects you in with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems. There's also the Audi phone box wireless phone charger and you'll get a three year subscription to the Audi Connect media package, which amongst other things, gives you a Wi-Fi hotspot, online radio, online traffic information and navigation with Google mapping and 3D map views, plus online news and parking and Amazon Alexa integration. Also built into Audi Connect is the Carter X services system, which the brand developed in partnership with Daimler and BMW. Uh, that allows this Audi to often almost magically respond to future weather or traffic conditions and to somehow know what's around the next corner. It's not magic, of course. Uh, the setup is instead driven by a mobile phone supported so-called vehicle swarm exchange of information system, which will see your A8 sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other drivers. Uh, what else? Well, you can uh, take Audi Connect connectivity with you even when you're not in your A8, thanks to the improved My Audi app. Now this transmits points of interest to the navigation system, it streams music and can transfer your calendar into the MMI infotainment screen. The app also allows you to seamlessly plan a route across multiple devices. So if you're going to a restaurant in an unfamiliar city, for example, and you have to park a few streets away from the venue, uh, navigation will continue with you on your smartphone as you complete the journey on foot. And finally, as usual with vehicle apps of this sort, you can use it to get a vehicle status report and to lock or unlock the doors from wherever you are. If you're choosing for yourself a mainstream A8 variant, you'll want to know the differences between Sport and S-Line trim. Well, Sport models get 18-inch, five V-spoke forged alloy wheels, but these are upgraded on an S-Line to larger 20-inch, five twin-arm alloy wheels, and the S-Line's exterior look is lifted by rear privacy glass and a specific exterior pack with S-Line styling for the bumpers and radiator grille. Inside, an S-Line model gains front sport seats and a black cloth headliner. An S-Line model also gets uh, intelligent matrix tech for the headlamps, a headlight cleaning system, dynamic indicator lights, and acoustic double glazing. Uh, obviously, you'll get quite a bit more at the top of the standard wheelbase range. Black edition spec comes with 20-inch, five V-spoke star Audi Sport alloy wheels, a black exterior styling pack, and piano black upper cabin inlays. If you've decided you'd prefer a long wheelbase A8, you'll be pleased to find that that extra spend gets you more than just a bit of body length. Uh, the highlight here is the rear seat remote package based around 5.7 inch OLED tablet, which provides various climate seat and convenience functions. Rear passengers also get their own Audi Music interface package with two USB ports and their own climate controls too via a four zone automatic air conditioning system. Plus, there's a useful 230 volt socket for things like laptops, heated back seats with luxurious comfort headrests, and electric sun blinds for the rear window and the rear door windows. 
As we said earlier, at the top of the A8 long wheelbase range lies Vorsprung trim, and that includes just about everything that Audi can offer on this car. Uh, dynamic all-wheel steering, a panoramic glass roof, a huge 21-inch seven-arm dynamic Audi Sport wheels, a 17-speaker, 730-watt Bang & Olufsen sound system, an extended leather upholstery pack, cooled and massaging front seats, multicolored ambient lighting, and a roof liner in dynamic and microfiber. At this exalted level, you also get a 360 degree surround view camera system and parking assist plus with remote parking, which will slot your A8 automatically into spaces. Plus a new feature introduced with this facelifted model, digital matrix LED headlights. Each lamp contains 1.3 million micro mirrors, which disperse the light into tiny pixels, allowing it to be adjusted with greater precision. As you'd expect, this standalone S8 Super Saloon shares much of the equipment that we've already mentioned across its three available trim levels. Plus, it has a few bespoke features of its own. Uh, the standard spec comes with 20-inch five double-spoke S-design wheels, matrix LED headlights, a sports differential, uh, dynamic all-wheel steering, and predictive active suspension. Uh, black edition that adds 21-inch 10 Y-spoke Audi Sport diamond turned wheels, a black exterior styling pack, vector carbon interior trim inlays, and a dynamic roof liner. And at the top of the S8 range, there are all the extra Vorsprung niceties that we just briefed you on. On to options. Uh, it's annoying that a load through ski hatch costs extra across the range. With any standard wheelbase A8 or a long wheelbase A8 in Sport or S-Line trim, uh, your Audi Centre is going to encourage you to find a couple of uh, thousand pounds more for the extra cost comfort and sound pack. And with this, you get a 19 speaker, 755 watt version of the Bang & Olufsen 3D sound system, the multicolored ambient lighting package, uh, the 360 degree surround view camera system, and also that parking assist plus with remote parking parking package. With this S8, there's much less to add, although with lesser variants, you can add the Bang & Olufsen 3D sound system and red brake calipers. As you probably expect, it's a long wheelbase A8 body style you'll need if you want to make the back of this car feel really luxurious. For that, you would ideally want limousine-like individual chairs rather than the standard sculpted bench of the uh, ordinary model, uh, which of course is possible. Uh, providing that as a long wheelbase bar, you've opted to find £3,000 more for the rear comfort pack. This gives you separate rear seats uh, between which is positioned a leather covered console and it also includes remote control seat operation, footrests and powered lumbar support. Uh, this pack includes twin screens built into the front seat backs too. That's a feature you can't have even as an extra on an ordinary Mercedes S-Class. There's a range of Audi exclusive paint shades if you can't find anything you like from the collection of standard metallic colors. And as you'd expect on any kind of A8, you can also add in the usual practical features like a tow hitch and roof rails for roof boxes and carriers for bicycles, skis and snowboards. Plus, as usual, your Audi Center will be able to offer you a garage door opener, a tow bar preparation and also the option of an electrically swiveling trailer hitch. We'd also want the Audi Connect stolen vehicle location system, which in the event of theft, allows the Audi call center to locate your A8, disable it, and even sound the horn and activate the indicators to draw attention to the vehicle. Enough with optional features, let's move on to look at safety. Now, before we get into all the electronic stuff, we ought to make the point that this car is fundamentally very safe thanks to its torsionally rigid body shell and its structural front end. In a head-on collision, three stress planes in the nose section absorb the forces. Plus, there are Isofix charge seat mountings, a tire pressure warning light, and all the usual front side and curtain airbags too, with rear side bags also being standard. If a collision is inevitable, Audi Presense Basic will help you withstand it by instantly tightening the seat belts, closing any open windows, and closing the sunroof too, if you've got one fitted. But of course, the whole idea is to avoid an accident in the first place, which is a task of a whole armory of electronic 
camera driven features. Over 40 of these were developed for this generation A8 and the majority of those are standard. Via a driver assist button at the bottom of the centre stack, uh, you can select the kind of uh, electronic security blanket that you want. Basic uh, includes only the most important features. Uh, maximum gives you absolutely everything and individual allows you to pick and choose uh, the features that you want activated. At the lowest level, basic, you'll get two main features. Pre-sense front autonomous braking. Now this is one of those systems that scans the road ahead looking for potential accident hazards as you drive and which will automatically brake the car to try to avoid those if you don't respond to the warnings. Uh, there is also lane departure warning uh, with emergency assist. Now this works on the highway to alert you if you're drifting out of your lane and it'll provide some corrective steering assistance if necessary and include the capability too to autonomously bring the car to a safe controlled stop if you, again, don't respond to warnings, uh, as might be the case if, for example, uh, you were suddenly taken ill at the wheel. The top maximum setting adds to this with a range of further features and the extent of these will depend on the AX spec that you've decided on. Uh, let's start with the standard camera features that we haven't yet mentioned. Uh, there's distance warning. Now this will alert you if you're getting uh, too close to the vehicle in front of you. There's rest recommendation. Now that will alert you if drowsiness is detected in your driving reactions. There's pre-sense basic, uh, that takes action if an impact is deemed inevitable and it optimizes seat position, it tensions the seat belts and it instantly closes the sunroof and any open windows too. Swerve assist, and now this will give you steering assistance in emergency maneuvers. There's narrowed road assist too, that helps you when you're driving through roadworks. Uh, there's turn assist, which warns you of oncoming vehicles uh, when you're turning out of a junction. And the virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen incorporates traffic sign recognition. That's one of those setups that can picture road signs and display them on the dash. Uh, there is also a standard Audi Connect safety and service feature which will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location if you are in an accident and that's activated the twin front side and curtain airbags. And the LED headlamps also feature high beam assist and that will automatically dip them in the face of oncoming traffic. Long wheelbase models also include Audi's City Assist package, uh, but with this standard wheelbase car, you'll have to pay around £1,500 extra for that. Four key camera safety features are included. Cross Traffic Assist Front is an intersection assist system that warns of dangerous cross traffic movements at junctions and can, if necessary, automatically apply the brakes, preventing an accident. Uh, lane change warning with cross traffic assist rear. Now this is basically a blind spot side assist feature which stops you from dangerously pulling out in front of other vehicles and applies corrective steering assistance uh, where necessary. Exit warning stops vehicle occupants opening their doors in the face of oncoming traffic and pre-sense rear warns you via a flashing light if you're about to be hit from behind so you can try to take avoiding action. It can also warn you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. It's all very reassuring. As we've said elsewhere in this film, cutting edge electrification isn't really a feature of this fourth generation A8, even in this improved form. But all the engines on offer are electrified, even if in most cases only in a largely ineffectual 48 volt mild hybrid manner. Audi's claim for the difference its MHEV or mild hybrid system makes is certainly modest, uh, saving of 0.7 litres of fuel every 100 kilometres or 62 miles. Worthwhile certainly, but you can keep the Prius comparisons on hold. A more significant factor in keeping this A8 efficiency returns class competitive is the relatively light weight of this car's high-tech aluminium Audi space frame body structure, which as we said in our design section is why this Audi Audi tips the scales at much the same curb weight as a rival base rear-driven Mercedes S-Class despite having to carry around the extra weight of a four-wheel drive system. 
That's the real reason why this Audi gets as close as it does to the returns of its arch rival, the Mercedes S-Class. Uh, the volume A850 TDI diesel manages up to 40.4 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 184 grams per kilometer. A rival Mercedes S 350D manages 42.8 mpg and 173 grams per kilometer, but that car isn't carrying around the extra weight of that four-wheel drive system that you get on all A8s. Uh, that Mercedes at the time of this test hadn't adopted the aforementioned 48 volt mild hybrid system that you'll find in all non-plug-in versions of this Audi. As usual with this kind of setup, a BAS, belt alternator starter generator, powers a 48 volt main electrical system in which a compact lithium ion battery in the boot stores energy harvested via a KERS uh, kinetic energy recovery system. During braking, the BAS package can recover up to eight kilowatts of power and feed it back into the battery. If the driver takes their foot off the accelerator at speeds between 34 and 99 miles an hour, the mild hybrid system will recuperate energy while the car rolls in idle or coasts for up to 40 seconds with its engine automatically switched off. Uh, the belt alternator starter generator then restarts the engine the next time the accelerator is depressed and it does it faster and more gently than a conventional starter. All of this you'll particularly notice at urban speeds uh, where the engine start-stop system is cutting in and out. The start-stop range begins at just under 14 miles an hour, so you'll often find the car coasting up to the end of a traffic queue, a traffic light, or a level crossing. All of which sounds good, but in fuel consumption terms, it still doesn't make as much of a difference as you might hope it would. Uh, we've given you the figures for the 50 TDI diesel, the alternative 3 litre V6 model, the 55 TFSI petrol, that manages up to 31 miles per gallon and 206 grams per kilometre of CO2. All the readings we're giving you are for the standard wheelbase models. Those of the alternative long wheelbase body style are only fractionally different though. Uh, this top S8 of course doesn't pretend to be particularly environmentally friendly and it isn't. Uh, it manages only up to 24.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 260 grams per kilometer of CO2. Mind you, that is with the benefit of a cylinder deactivation system that cuts out half the cylinders at low to medium throttle speeds. Goodness knows what an S8 would return without that. If you do happen to be prioritizing efficiency with this car, it'd obviously be better if you stumped up the large premium that Audi is demanding over the conventional engines uh, for the 60 TFSI E plug-in petrol version. With that, of course, it's a question of keeping the car charged up. That should take around two and a half hours from a seven kilowatt garage wall box and making the absolute most of the potential all electric driving range. Thanks to the bigger 17.9 kilowatt hour battery that Audi's fitted since the original launch of that variant, uh, this is well over the 30 mile mark, but that's still way off the impressive 63 miles that you get from a rival but pricier Mercedes plug-in S-Class or the 55 mile figure that you get from a rival BMW 750e xDrive. But this Audi offers a considerable list price saving over those two rivals, so the sums could still add up in its favour. If in running an A860 TFSI E you don't regularly plug the thing in though, uh, then as with any PHEV, the whole reason for choosing the car in the first place falls apart because all you'll essentially end up with is a heavier version of the conventional A855 TFSI petrol variant. And as you'll have gathered from the figures that we gave you earlier on, uh, one of those isn't going to be particularly cheap to run. Whatever your A8 variant of choice, uh, the magazine tests have pointed out that across the board, the efficiency figures that we've quoted can be very difficult to achieve in day-to-day -day motoring, but uh, then that isn't an issue that's exclusive to Audi. Uh, much is going to depend on the driver, hence the Ingolstadt brand's efforts with this car to help the person at the wheel to do more when it comes to issues of frugality. An efficiency assist segment of the Centre Dash infotainment screen uh, will allow you to 
to activate or deactivate some of the car's uh, main frugality aids. Uh, I'm talking about things like the car's intelligent coasting feature and accelerator pedal feedback, which resists you pressing too hard on the throttle. You can also activate general economy tips and what Audi calls predictive messaging. Uh, there is additionally an energy consumers readout uh, in the instrument cluster, and that shows you uh, the effect that, say, the uh, air conditioning is having on the car's energy usage. Beyond that, as usual with the company's models, there's an efficiency setting on the drive select vehicle dynamic system, and that tweaks the air conditioning, the gear shift timings, and the throttle response for maximum frugality. Uh, if you choose to use the individual drive select mode, which allows you to tailor your preferred settings, then you'll find that efficient is one of the three options that you can choose for each criteria setting. The MMI navigation system on this car has been programmed around what Audi calls predictive and efficient driving, which means that it will adapt the drive demeanor of your A8 based on things like speed limits and gradient changes. Uh, there's also a predictive efficiency assist setup that comes as part of the car's adaptive cruise assist system. Uh, predictive efficiency assist really is very clever indeed. It constantly gathers navigation data, uh, camera images and feedback from the built-in car to x message system which receives car swarm feedback from other similarly equipped vehicles. Uh, using all this, the software can then contribute to a more economical driving style. Uh, for example, it can instruct you when to release the accelerator uh, before entering a curve or behind a slower vehicle, for example. Get out onto the highway and with the adaptive cruise control system activated, uh, efficiency assist will automatically make all the frugal driving adjustments for you. What else? Well, bear in mind that as with all modern diesel cars, the TDI version of this one uses an AdBlue fuel additive and that's stored in a separate rear tank and that'll need to be topped up as part of regular servicing. Uh, talking of maintenance, servicing your A8 should be no more taxing than is the case with one of the company's smaller cars. Uh, the standard intervals across the range are every 18,600 miles or every two years, whichever comes around first. Uh, over Overall maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans then you'll be offered those at initial purchase and they can cover you for a maximum of three years and include an oil service and a major service. You may also be interested to know that this car can even book its own service appointments via the My Audi app, uh, as well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance. Uh, the app can, at the appropriate time, send a service request directly to your local dealer. Uh, alternatively, you can sign up for Audi service request, and that will use the onboard Wi-Fi to enable your car to communicate with the dealer. Um, as your A8 nears the time when work's going to be needed, uh, the diagnostics alert your nominated local Audi centre, uh, who will then contact you to book in a convenient time. Another neat service your dealer can offer you is the so-called Audi Cam system. Here, technicians carrying out workshop inspections on your A8 can focus a handheld Audi Cam camera on specific problems, and they can accompany the image with a verbal diagnosis to create footage that can then be sent to your computer or your smartphone. Uh, that way, you're going to know exactly what work you're authorizing on your car. What else? Uh, let's talk tax. Now, the CO2 figures we briefed you on earlier see all three 48-volt mild hybrid models slotting into the highest possible 37% benefiting kind company car tax bracket, but then that's also the case for a rival diesel or petrol Mercedes S-Class. The attraction of the A860 TFSI E plug-in variant uh, becomes obvious when you consider that its benefiting kind taxation status falls to 16%, although because of the relatively meagre EV driving range of that variant, uh, that is quite a way above the BIK rating of a rival Mercedes S-Class and BMW 7 Series PHEV. Still, as we mentioned earlier on, the considerably lower price of the A860 TFSI E could still sway ultimately ultimate cost calculations in its favor. So on to residuals. Uh, for once, we're testing an Audi that isn't top of its class in this regard, but it's not too far off. Uh, according to industry experts CAP, an A850 TDI Sport would, after three years and 36,000 miles, uh, be worth 30.68% of its original value. 
Uh, we'll finish up by covering the warranty. All cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas BMW and Mercedes don't limit your mileage in that period, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Uh, optional extra cost packages can extend that cover to either four or five years and 75,000 and 95,000 miles respectively. As for insurance groupings, well, both the 50 TDI diesel and the 55 TFSI petrol variants uh, grouping start at 45E. It's group 50E for the 60 TFSI E or the S8. Audi built its reputation on technology and then fell back on stylistic design and cool marketing to sell its products. In its original form, this fourth generation A8 signaled a welcome change of direction and this modestly improved version continues that evolutionary trend. Of course, there are always going to be those who will prefer the heritage and elegance of a Mercedes S-Class or the slightly more dynamic demeanour of a BMW 7 Series. The A8 continues to be a rare alternative third option, but we can understand why you still might want one. In the latest versions of the BMW 7 and the S-Class, there's, uh, to some extent, a feeling that technology has replaced elegance. That's a sense you just don't get with this Audi. And it's also worth pointing out that an A8 is considerably more affordable. True, Ingolstadt can't yet offer you the full electric options in the segment, which are now available at BMW and Mercedes dealerships, but the plug-in hybrid version of this A8 with its improved range may actually be all you really need in that regard. And at the other extreme, if all you want is a road-burning super saloon, a rival BMW and Mercedes model would struggle to fully replicate the driving pleasure of this top S8 variant. But is the A8 a car that you can bond with? A luxury conveyance to love as well as admire? Well, the answer depends, of course, on the owner. Some may still see this Audi as being a little remote compared to a status-conscious Mercedes or a proudly opulent BMW. We're guessing, though, that a small but significant number of boardroom buyers might now find this Audi a surprisingly complete all-round choice were they to be minded to consider one. Hugely capable, innovative and beautifully built, this is, in many respects, the car that rivals always feared Audi would build. And if you're in this market, it's still one you need to try. <laughs>